What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of Mornings with Lee Hammock, your favorite self-aware narcissist. Y'all, today's episode, we're going to be talking about how narcissists don't trust you. They never will. <laughs> I already know me starting this episode, even the title of it, even the, 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 the title of it, the thumbnail, the capture is like, Lee, what the hell are you talking about? They don't trust us. We don't trust them. Exactly. You're not supposed to, I mean, you might start off the relationship trusting them, um, but gradually you'll lose your trust for them because they do un, like they do things to make you not trust them anymore. Let's keep it hot. Let's keep it hot and ready like a little Caesar's pizza. This is what happens. This is part of the dynamic. This is part of the things a lot of people experience or whatnot. Um, narcissists don't trust you. But like, why the hell don't they trust us? Like, why? Before we get too deep into the video, y'all, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. So you don't miss a video upload. Um, also check out joining my channel, the channel memberships and the, uh, my courses and my support group. Boom, boom, boom. But yeah, so narcissists grow up being extremely guarded people. You know, a lot of us, you know, a lot of di uh, like not even a lot of diagnosed narcissists, a lot of narcissists who haven't been diagnosed grow up, um, just not like extremely guarded, extremely protective of ourselves, extremely, you know, defensive of ourselves. We guard our egos. We guard our, you know, guard our vulnerabilities, guard our insecurities and whatnot. And as as children, as young adults, we take that into adulthood, right? So we don't trust anybody because like the way a lot of people become narcissists, right? Like one step of it, one stage of it is we get our trust violated as, as kids, right? The people we trust to protect us, the people we trust to love us and be there for us hurt us in some way, shape or form, right? The people that we originally trusted ended up betraying us in some way, shape or form. So if the if one of our caretakers, our parents or grandparents or whoever it is close to us, if we can't trust them with our emotional vulnerability, if we can't trust them with our feelings, then who the hell can we trust? If I can't trust my mom or whoever, right? if I can't trust my mom, then why the hell would I trust you? And I know just, and they, they take it out on you. Well, lady, how is it our fault that you can't trust your mom? Exactly. It's not your fault that I can't trust my mom. But if I don't work through that, then it might as well be your fault. You see what I'm saying? If I don't work through that, if I if I internalize this, if I take this into my adulthood, if I don't work, work on this as a kid or whatnot, <clears throat> and I bring this into my adulthood, then you see how that can be, how this can be problematic. Right. This can be extremely problematic, problematic. Narcissistic people don't trust you because they didn't trust somebody in their childhoods. Right. And no matter what you do, they're not going to trust you. They might pretend to trust you at first. And that's how they get, you know, that's how they get close to you. Like y'all might be good communicators at first. Y'all might be in a good, healthy relationship at first. And then something goes haywire in the relationship. Something happens in the relationship to make this person no longer to, to make this person no longer trust you like you can be the perfect person for them and then once you do something to show your true colors <laughs> well Leah, what Lee, what the hell are you talking about show our true colors wait we've been authentic since the beginning not to the narcissist you haven't to the narcissist you haven't been authentic since the beginning to the narcissist you look like a liar because you you are not who you presented yourself to be like once they start to see your flaws that you're a flawed person they no longer see you as perfect anymore, right? So at first you were perfect, perfect for us, but now we see that you're a flawed person, so you're no longer perfect for us, right? So we treat you like a liar. We treat you like we can't trust you. We treat you like you're going to hurt us, like everybody else in our lives hurt us when we were kids. We treat you like this. So we, we become extremely guarded and defensive against you because you are not a perfect person. You because we, you, we feel like you betrayed us. We feel like you betrayed us. You might not have actually betrayed us, y'all. This is how we take it. We take it as a betrayal. Whatever you've done, like whether you told us no, whether you set a boundary, whether you did something something that we didn't like, whether you didn't cut off a friend that we did, we hated, whether you try to hold me accountable, whatever it is, you made us view you differently. So we don't trust you anymore. We view that as a betrayal. You try to hold me accountable for something that I, that I have actually done to you that's a betrayal in my book. So I'm going to treat you like a betrayer, right? You are a betrayer. I'm going to treat you like a betrayer because you betrayed me in this instance, because you betrayed me in this sense, because you betrayed me. So now I don't trust you. I can never trust you again. Once you lose the trust of a narcissist, like 
well, like I said, they never really fully trusted you in the first place. But like once you lose the little microcosm or the little bit of trust that they have for you, there's no getting it back, y'all. Well, Lee, that, Lee, you make it sound like it's hopeless. Yo, there's no getting it back. You can try to get it back. You can battle. You can fuss. You can fight. You can feel like you can do whatever you feel like is necessary. But once the trust is gone, you don't get it back. And that's not me trying to be doom and gloom and bring that into your relationship. That's just the truth. Once you violate their trust, you do not get it back. You just don't. I know when people hate when I say that, but like, this, is just, this is just me being honest. Like You don't even have to do anything to violate their trust, y'all. You just being your authentic self could be enough for them to feel like they've been their trust has been violated, right? It could be enough for them to make, for them to make it feel like their trust has been violated and whatnot and never, never to trust you again and start treating you like that. They trust you the most, if any, during the initial love bombing phase, right? They trust you the most during this love bombing phase. So if I trust you right now during this phase, then guess what happens? I'm going to trust. Like when the devaluation comes, when I see when I see your flaws, when I see you who see you for who you really are, that's when I start to not trust you anymore, right? When your flaws start to show up, I stop. I stop love bombing you, and then the devaluation phase starts, and I start treating you differently. That narcissist in your life starts treating you differently. They start treating you like you're a less trustworthy person. And this is one of those continual things that can that happens over and over again. Once you lose the trust of a narcissist, the little bit that was there, that might have been there, there's no getting it back. They will always be guarded against you. They will always be protective against you. Well, Lee, you don't sound like you're protective and guarded against your wife. Y'all, I've been in therapy for seven years years seven years damn near a hundred therapy appointments over seven years that's crazy for me i've been so in therapy so long that's wild to me i mean i'm 39 i've been in therapy since i was 32 years old working on myself so it allows me to rebuild trust like unless the person in your life the narcissistic toxic person whatever unless they decide to go to some type of intense psychotherapy this is who they're going to be. And this is not me trying to be mean or really this doom and gloom again. Like I'm just telling you, this is who they're going to be. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and just be like, Oh, you, this is, you, know, you there's a chance for them to get better. No, a lot of times they are fine with who they are. They just expect you to accept them for who they are. They are fine being themselves. They're fine doing whatever it takes for them to get their needs met. They are fine in this instance. They are fine in these situations. It's you that has the problem. It's you that's being problematic. It's you that's doing this. It's you that's doing that, right? This happens to so many people. Um, my wife texts me, y'all. Oh, she, she's about to go to Pilates. My wife does Pilates. Yeah. Um, Pilates bodies. <laughs> but they are fine being them, y'all. You have to keep moving forward. You have to empower yourself. You have to take care of yourself. Like you can build the you like I said, you will like the crazy thing about it is, even I'm telling y'all this right now, that you can't rebuild that trust. They will try to sometimes try to make it seem like you can. They will send you on this crazy journey. Like you, like I don't know if y'all seen the Lord of the Rings. I'm kind of like a sci-fi, you know, geek nerd type person right here. Y'all don't, don't, don't look like it. Battlestar Galactica, Star Wars, Star Trek, Lord of the Rings, all the other good stuff, right? Um, you might not, like I said, they they might not, you you probably can't rebuild the trust with them, right? You, you can't. They will make it seem like you can. They will send you on these quests like Frodo and Sam from the Shire to Mordor to try to rebuild the trust. They'll tell you you have to, you know, you have to, the trust you have to get to get the one ring to rule them all will come back. Like, I need you to go get the one ring to rule them all. And you'll be like, I'll try. I don't know where it's at. I'll try. Go to that evil eye right there that's burning and cooking everybody. The evil eye that's cooking everybody and killing everybody. Go to that. Okay. You know. They will send you on that quest right there, but you can't rebuild that trust. I'm not telling you this again, y'all. I'm not telling you to leave the relationship. This is not what I'm trying to tell you. You that's the decision that you have to make on your own. That's the decision that you have to come to on your own. Like if you want to leave the relationship, that's something you have to tell yourself, and you have to support, start working towards it, right? You have to start working towards it. But the trust of a narcissist, it's 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 so fickle, y'all. It's so it don't take much to exp once it's gone, it's gone. And this is not just an intimate relationship, y'all. This can be your partner, I mean, your brother, your sister, your co-workers, your friends. This can be whoever it is. Like once that trust is gone, like they won't trust you again. Like even your parents, it's crazy. Even your parents won't trust you. 
Like if you have a narcissistic parent, even they won't trust you in some of these situations. Even they will look down on you. Even they will start to treat you differently. So that's one of them things you have, you kind of have to be careful for as well, y'all, because your parents will start to kind of treat you sideways if you have a toxic narcissistic parent. You know what I mean? This happens. Like they won't trust you. It's kind of crazy when your parents who brought you into this world are toxic as hell and they manipulate you and they use you and abuse you and then they themselves don't trust you. It's crazy. It, it can be crazy as hell. Anyways, y'all, thank y'all for tuning into another episode. Y'all know I appreciate y'all so much. Before we hop off, make sure if you haven't already, hop on Amazon. If you have a little kids in the house, about about I say nine, ten years old, check out my book. Remember, it's not your fault. It's on Amazon. It helps you have those those kind of difficult conversations um, with your kids. A conversation starter with your kids about toxic relationship dynamics, learning them to trust people, feeling safe within themselves. Again, it's called Remember, it's not your fault. It's on Amazon right here. You see what I'm saying? Um, anyways, y'all. Check out my links, check out my courses and all the other good stuff. Uh, and as always, y'all, mental illness is out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. I am extremely grateful for you have no idea. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Helps reach more people and click on the screen to watch another video or to browse through another playlist. There's also a link on the screen to check out my courses and my support groups to help you heal and understand what you've been through. Thank you so much again. I will 